previously. Okay, so you've just got your new Cisco router or switch. You need to configure it. So how do you configure a brand new Cisco router or switch? I specifically, once again, bought this router because it's available in Packet Tracer. Now you don't just click on a router in the real world to connect a console connection to the router. Okay, so I could use this console cable. So let's try that once again. Hopefully it won't blue screen. So on the PC, I'm gonna connect the USB console cable, and then I'll connect this to the console of the router. So basically connected to the console of the router and to the USB of the PC. Okay, so once again, right click on Windows Start, go to Device Manager. I've got a additional COM port now. It's now showing up as COM4. So the whole process once again is to start PuTTY. Select serial. Serial port that I'm gonna use is COM4. Click open. And what I've got now is a connection to a router. If I type show version, this shows me that the router is running Cisco iOS XE software version 16.0303. Pressing spacebar, I see a whole bunch of additional information. And I can see that this is a Cisco ISR 4321BK9 router. So that is an example of a Cisco router. I can type enable once again. I can type conf t to go to global configuration mode. Type n to go to privilege mode. Type disable to go back to user mode. So user mode, type enable to go to enable or privilege mode, type conf t to go to global configuration mode. You have to configure the device in configuration mode or global configuration mode. And there are sub modes after that, and I'll show you those later. And then end takes me back to enable mode, disable takes me to user mode, and then I can type exit to exit out of the router. I am connected to console zero of the router. But now let's get you to do this. So what I'm gonna do is start Packet Tracer. Please make sure that you've downloaded Packet Tracer and that you've got access to Packet Tracer because I'm gonna show you how to do something very similar using Packet Tracer. So when Packet Tracer boots up, I've got a login. I've shown you in separate videos how to do this. Okay, so the physical router that I'm using is a Cisco, type enable here. Show version allows me to see what type of router it is. It's a Cisco ISR router. Once again, show ver for short or show version, full command. This allows me to see what type of router I'm using. It's an ISR 4321. In Packet Tracer, they have ISR 4321 routers. So if I click on the router, you'll notice that this looks very similar to the physical router that I have right here. And if I click on CLI, you'll notice that once this boots up, that it's very similar to the router that I'm using. Now, when a device boots up once again and it doesn't have a saved configuration, we'll see this initial configuration dialog. I'm gonna type no to bypass that. And on this router, if I type show version and press spacebar, you'll notice this looks very similar to my physical router. So here's the physical router, and here's the packet tracer router. Notice how that looks very similar to this. Slight difference in output, but very, very similar. Now we'll talk about configuration registers later in the course. This has actually been changed to 2142. The default is 2102. But again, we'll talk about that later, so don't worry about it now. We can see licensing information on the packet tracer router similar kind of information on a physical router. I specifically, once again, bought this router because it's available in Packet Tracer. Now you don't just click on a router in the real world to connect a console connection to the router. 
what you actually need to do is have a console cable. So what I'm gonna do is add a PC to my packet tracer topology, and then I'm gonna go to connections, and notice this blue cable is a console cable. I'm gonna connect the RS-232 interface to the console of the router. Now routers have what are called auxiliary ports and console ports. Auxiliary ports in the old days were used to connect modems to a router so you could phone the router to use an out of band connection to configure it. Not used that much these days. But notice now on this PC, if I click on the PC and go to desktop, and I'll just make this bigger, I can select terminal. This is what's called the well-known defaults for a console port. On PuTTY as an example, if I right click and go change settings, connection serial, you'll notice these values are the same as these values in Packet Tracer. So this is the physical router, this is Packet Tracer. Now there is one difference, you'll notice flow control is X on, X off. Generally that should be set to none, and that might be what's causing the problem. So these are the values that you generally wanna use. So I'll click OK. So what you'll notice now is I've connected to the router using Packet Tracer, and that looks very similar to PuTTY. So this is PuTTY, show version. But once again, that's crashed, so flow control didn't help. So my laptop crashed once again. Looks like that USB connection isn't very good. But what I wanted to show you is, once again, this is Packet Tracer. Show version looks very similar to a physical router. If I open up Device Manager once again and look at my console ports, so here are my various console ports. So COM4, if I remember right, is the router. Open that up again. Run PuTTY again. Go to console four. Here is my router. So show version on the router. You'll notice it looks very similar to Packet Tracer. Back in Packet Tracer, looks very much the same. So the great thing about Packet Tracer, and what I'll do is I'll just turn off this physical router right now so that the room becomes quieter and that we don't have it crashing my Windows laptop again. The great thing about Packet Tracer is you can test this stuff as if you connect it to real devices. So let's add a switch so that you can see the switches. Here's a 3650 switch. Again, in PuTTY, I'll open up a new session and I'll connect to, let's say, COM3. So COM3, one of my USB connections. This is a 3560C switch, show version. That went a bit quick, but notice at the bottom here, 3560. In Packet Tracer, here's a 3560. So what I could do as an example is add another PC to my topology and then go to connections, select console cable and connect the RS32 cable to the console port of the switch. On the PC, go to desktop, go to terminal, select the defaults. And what you'll notice is we see a switch booting up and you can see the full process. I'll go right to the beginning. You can see here the switch is starting up and that looks very similar to a real physical switch booting up. And then we get the initial configuration dialog. I'll say no to bypass that. And notice I'm on this packet tracer switch, which is a 3560, 24 port switch. Going to my physical switch, this is a slightly different switch. And what I want you to see, and I'll put these side by side, is packet tracer is very, very similar to a real switch. So on a real switch, I'll type exit. We get console port is available. Packet Tracer type exit. We get console is now available. Press enter in Packet Tracer. Press enter on a real switch. Type enable. Type enable. Type conf t. Type conf t. Type end here. Type end here. 
press question mark. On this side, press question mark. You'll notice that it looks very much like a real switch. Real switch gives you the, the real thing. It's the best way to do things, but not everyone can afford to buy a bunch of switches. So packet trace is all you need. You can connect to the consoles of multiple devices by adding PCs to your topology, but you don't have to do that. On a switch like this, you could just go to the CLI. Now it has to be powered on. So I have to add a power module to this specific switch. But if I click on CLI now, I can see the CLI of the switch without having to actually connect a console cable to the switch. So Packet Tracer gives you two options. You can either do it this way, or you can simply click on the switch, go to CLI, and see the CLI directly without using a console cable. But this replicates or simulates what happens in the real world. In the real world, you can't just click on a device to access the console. You have to physically connect to it, uh, either via the console or remotely using Telnet or SSH. Okay, that was a long video, but hopefully I've now shown you how to connect to the console of routers and switches using multiple options. I've shown you how to use the old way of doing it, a rollover cable. I've shown you how to use USB to rollover cable. I've shown you USB cables directly to switches. USB, obviously much easier and much better today, and that's a preferred way to do it. But if you come across an old router switch, you may need to use one of these. Not as good as USB, but there you go. Okay, but make sure that you can get this working. Make sure that you can connect your PC in Packet Tracer to the console of a router and a switch and gain access to the device.